Every WordPress website sends emails to people. So if someone registers, an email goes out. Someone leaves a comment, an email goes out. If you have a contact form and someone fills that out, an email goes out. And some websites are more complex. They have an e-commerce system or learning management system or maybe an event website or a booking website. And those happen to generate really mission critical emails that will go out from your website. Now, regardless of how much email your website sends out, it is super crucial mission mission critical that your website reliably sends out emails that end up in someone's inbox and not in their spam box. And sadly, for most web hosts and WordPress, WordPress on its own needs a little help to get those emails that go out to actually make it in people's inbox. Now, there's four main features in the free plugin I'm going to show you how to install and configure on your website today that make this one plugin so crucial to every single website that sends an email. Email. And we just went over every website pretty much sends outbound email. Now, while this plugin is absolutely free to get similar features, you're looking at $49 per website per year. But because of this video and this plugin, you get to skip all of that and have everything for free. And that $49 per year still doesn't have everything that this free plugin has. So it is literally Christmas coming early for website owners. So let's go ahead and quickly talk over those four features and then I'm going to show you how to get this set up on your website. So the first one is among SMTP connections, you can have native API connections with email service providers. This is going to make your web server love you because sending email can really tax your web server, which potentially can slow down your website and all the websites that are on your server. So to have the ability to use the native API connection is a huge difference. There's also email logging. So all these emails that go out, you're going to be able to see a log of the emails that go out. And if one of them happened to fail, there's a nice little button you can click on to resend that email right Right out. Now, for those of us that do more complex things on our website, you can actually use multiple email sending services simultaneously on your website. So if you want one email service to be used for your e-commerce emails and one for your contact form, that's super easy to accomplish using this. And the big one, this is the Moab. This is humongous. Sadly, though, it's not yet here, but it will be here within a matter of weeks. And it will was a unique request that I made, which is email service failover. What that means is if you're using an email service to send emails out and some, for some reason they pause your account or they cut you off, you have no way of knowing that your emails aren't going out. So they're also going to be adding failover a failover feature. So if it doesn't work with one, it will fail over and go out through an alternative email sending service. I'll tell you a little story on why that is important at the end of the video. Whew. Let's go ahead and get started. Thumbs up this video if you're excited to learn how to do this and all the features that this plugin has. Let's hop into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. This is so simple. I'm gonna first install the plugin. I'll go to plugins and then I'll click on add new. Now over here on the top right, I'm gonna search for Fluent SMTP. And here it is. Now, this is a new plugin, but don't worry. The developers of this are not new themselves. They make a very popular contact form plugin and a CRM plugin for WordPress and they made this for their existing customers. So they're not going anywhere and that's how they can afford to make this gift completely for free where other companies that have something similar charge for it. So let's go ahead and click on install now. Now I'm going to click on activate and that takes me back here to the list of plugins I have and right here I can click on configure fluent SMTP. So at launch these are the services that are supported through native API connections and Amazon SES, Mailgun Send, Grid Send in Blue, Spark Post. I'll tell you a story about Spark Post. Uh, uh, Peppy Post, never heard of them, and Native PHP. So it's really these ones here in the middle. But first, let's do what most people are going to need is just configuring a normal, typical SMTP connection. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. And now here is where I'm gonna fill it out. First, I'll enter in the from name. So when someone receives it, this will be the from name and the from email. Okay, so I've gone ahead and entered that in. I've got my name and I have an email. I just need to go create the email address, but it's it's tied to the domain name here on this website. So now we need some information that we can only get from our SMTP service provider. So here I am on SiteGround, which is where this website's hosted. So so I'm gonna create a brand new email address to use here and we're gonna use its SMTP connection. It's super easy to do. And if you've ever configured an email address on an email program, it's so easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on websites right here. And then I'm gonna click right here where it says, let's create a new website. I'm gonna click on site tools. Next, I'm gonna click where it says email and then click right here where it says accounts. Now your hosting will probably be different, but it's not probably that hard to figure out how to create an email address. So so now you can see I can create my email here, but you see off to the right it says email configuration. This is the information that I'm going to need to copy and paste into that plugin. So I'll go ahead and put an account name and a password. With that entered, I'll click on create. All right, I've gone ahead and created a brand new email address and it's the same one that I entered already. I just need to copy and paste this outgoing server information. So first I'm gonna copy in the server address. Now this, it, with SiteGround it's a little different. It's just the website address. However, with most hosting services, it would be mail dot and then your domain name. So I've got that in my clipboard and I could go ahead and paste it right here under SMTP host. The port number I believe was 465. I'll go verify it. I believe it was SSL. So let's go back and see. And yep, right here it says 465 is the port. So now all I need to do is enter in, Turn. Uh, I need to toggle this on to enter in my authentication. And then I'll go ahead and enter the username I just created on SiteGround and the password I used. All right, with that all entered in, I'm gonna click on Save Connection Settings and then it's actually going to test it. And so I get this message here and I love that it verifies everything first. It's basically saying I goofed. And you know what I did? I goofed, I got these mixed up. It says from email and from name. I got them backwards, which is all right. So I'm gonna just go here and fix that really quick and enter this in. All right, with that all set correctly, let's give it a shot now. I'm gonna go ahead, it's gonna test it, and it looks like it went through just fine. So if you made it to this screen, everything is configured and it's going to work fine, but we always want to test. So I'm gonna click right here and click on email test. And then right here, we just need to fill in a from and a to. And so I'll do that now. And there's also this option of the format of the email. It doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on send test. And I see here on the top right, it says email delivered successfully. I can click here where it says email logs. And this is gonna be a log of all the emails that your website is sending out. And I can see it listed right here sent and it is successful. And I can even resend it or I can click on this little icon right right here and I'll be able to see exactly what ended up being sent. Now, so far you have seen how to configure this and you've also seen how to interact with the email log. Now for settings, it's actually very simple. We have a list of our email connections. and I'll show you how to make a second connection right now. But over here to the right, you can control the logging if you want it on or off. I can uncheck this and it won't log it. And here's a really nice option. You can set it to delete the entries after 14 days. I think this is great so that your, your performance doesn't get impacted in the slightest. So now let me show you how to configure a second connection with this. And it's also gonna be sort of how the email failover feature works, which will be coming out. Unfortunately, it's not ready yet for this video, which is fine, but it'll come out soon enough. So if you want to add a second email connection, here's the option, add another connection, and then you would choose the connection, for example, Amazon SES. Now, if you're not familiar with Amazon SES, I've used this extensively. It's a little more involved setting up, but it's not the end of the world, but it's extremely, extremely cheap. I can't actually remember the pricing off the top of my head right now. I think it's like, is it 10 cents per 10,000 emails or, yeah, I think it's 10 cents per 10,000 or 10 cents per 1,000. Well, I'm glad I searched it and you can see it's really, really cheap. I had it wrong. It's 10 cents to send 1,000 emails. That is insanely 
inexpensive. Now it is a little bit technical to set up. It's not that hard. Basically you create your account and then you have to request an increase on how many emails that you can send per day because they're trying to prevent spammers from damaging the service. And then you just have to generate an API key. So when we're looking at these settings right here, we need that API key to put here and the secret right here, you just copy and paste those in and you're gonna be set. But here's the thing, this is very important and you might get confused. If you go and try to add in a second email service and see where it says from name, from email and you put the same email you used in the prior one, this will actually replace that one. So the way the email outbound email routing works is based upon the sending email. So if you have a contact form and you want it to be from Adam at let's create a new website.com, but then we want to use a different service for WooCommerce, we need to just use a different from email. So that could be receipts at let's create a new website.com or something like that. It just has to be different. And then this would be saved as a separate outbound email connection. And that's how you're gonna be able to use two different services for different parts of your website that have to send outbound emails. And that's quite simply all that there is to using this plugin. Now your emails are gonna go out reliably. Now let me tell you that quick story of why an email failover service or feature that's gonna be added to this is crucial, especially for agency owners, anyone that has a website that sends outbound emails. And as far as I know, I haven't found any other tool that has a failover feature like this. Let me tell you what happened last November on one of my websites, a bot was attacking my website with spam registrations. In fact, they sent 4,000 registrations in about a two hour time period and these emails were bouncing. So the, the service I was using to send the outbound emails put a block on my server's IP address so no more emails could be sent. The only thing is, they don't have a mechanism to notify me. So I had no way of knowing that, I had no way to know that all outbound emails, legitimate ones, such as contact form ones, they were just not going out. And that lasted four days until someone mentioned it to me. And so if I had had an email failover feature, then I wouldn't have had a problem. There would have been no disruption. The second time this happened is using SparkPost. I used to use SparkPost and someone went on my contact form. They have these bots that will fill out your contact form with garbage and they used a bunch of bit.ly links. Well, Spark Post, if they see a bit.ly link go through and their, their email service, they immediately freeze your account and you have to go through all kinds of steps to get it unfrozen. And by the way, they don't let you know that they freeze your account. So it happened then as well. Email failover, I think, is going to be the key feature of this plugin. It already has a lot of amazing uh, features that you would normally pay $49 per website per year, and it has them for free, but that's gonna be the killer feature when it comes out. And that's why I'm switching all of my websites where I use an alternative plugin to Fluent SMTP because I desperately need that email failover failover and I love the logging. At least if it had the logging on my website, I could have maybe, if I would have logged in and looked, I would have noticed that there was a problem. But unfortunately, uh, it is what it is. So uh, I'm happy with this. Uh, I think it's a fantastic plugin. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it out with your friends. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.